What is going on, everybody? Hope you are having a wonderful week so far. Uh, before we start the podcast, uh, I have a Discord community. Uh, we have a bunch of conversations on there. I give away free music, give away tickets, give away a bunch of stuff, and also just have a bunch of conversations with everybody on there. Um, if you want to join, link is in the bio. Um, not in the bio. Link is definitely, definitely not in the bio. It's in the um, description below or wherever you're listening to this on. Um, also, if you do listen to these regularly, um, it's very helpful if you give us a review and if you uh, give us a rating. It keeps the podcast going, keeps things interesting um, and keeps the guests coming on the show. So I would really appreciate it if you do that. So this week on the podcast, Wes Clark, apart from having an amazing surname, um, Wes, I've actually known Wes for a while. He didn't know I've known him for that long. You'll hear all of that in the podcast. Um, Wes was producer, DJ for many years, um, had extreme success in the industry as a DJ, as a producer. Um, and whilst he was DJ and decided to kind of get more into the production and the mixing side of things um, and has an extremely um, successful career in the art of mixing um, as in making records sound better for people. He's won a Grammy. He's been nominated for multiple Grammys. He's had multiple number ones. Um, and he's also a lovely guy, um, which is really nice to, to be around. So, yeah, I've I've really enjoyed this conversation, an hour and a half of just us talking about everything from mental health to the music industry to life outside of music, finances, everything. Um, so yeah, really good conversation. So without further ado, Wes Clark. Wes Clark, it's been a long hey. time, man. <laughs> it has. When was the last time? Mate, honestly, I don't even think you're going to remember ever us meeting. Oh, we actually met in real life. I don't remember. Them, yeah, you fair. won't. Um, no one ever does because <laughs> you last time you played, you, you used to play for Head Candy, right? Yeah. And you did the summer in Ibiza or you used to be their res one of their residents yeah. at El Divino. Yeah. And also you, did you do occasionally at Space Terrace? Did, yeah. So you're never going to remember me. Um, but can you remember a guy called Tom Brown who used to work on radio on the island? No, if I'm honest. So we used to record DJ sets. Um, okay. And I was, I used to record you as a DJ. Did you? No yeah, way. Years ago. Um, we're talking 2008. Wow. 2008, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. That that literally feels like another lifetime to me. I know, right? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. my DJ life just feels like another lifetime. Well, yeah, it I, really does. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on because there's so many people that want to be working in music and it's very easy to like, especially nowadays, look on social media and go, how do I work in music and I make music or I'm technical in the studio, but I actually just don't want to be a DJ. And it's, it's so yeah. hard to see that, to see like that there's other jobs in this industry to do, um, and make a living from music, but you've kind of had this like classic, you've done it like book style where you're just like, You've obviously had a career in production in in DJ and touring DJ, um, and then you went into mixing. Yeah, it it seems that way on the outside. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's why I want to talk to you because it clearly isn't. But tell me, it seems that way. It seems like I did it by the book, but um, actually, I was kind of the same. I I didn't really want to be a dj either yeah but it got me a foot in the door um i mean that's kind of a lie i did enjoy djing everyone enjoys djing right it's uh yeah it's fun but um and i did start off as a dj but i wanted to be a jungle dj okay that was my thing 
<laughs> I just wanted to play at Jungle Raves. And jungle to, jungle to Head Candy. Where did that yeah, happen? Exactly. It went, yeah, it went, it went the opposite direction, yeah. didn't it? Um, but I, I did start as a jungle, jungle DJ at sort of around the age of 11, 12, 13, and then 14, I was DJing in nightclubs in, mm. in Luton, you yeah. know, in my local town, um, at Jungle Raves. And that was, for me, that was my dream then. Do you know, that, that, yeah. that was it for me. I was like, oh, I'm doing, doing what I want to do. Um, but then it kind of, yeah, I mean, it did, you know, I didn't become a, a famous jungle DJ, which is what, which was my vision, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I ended up sort of, um, I ended up just DJing in my local town on a Friday night, just in the local club. My, my friends from college owned the club actually. And, uh, I used to play there on Friday nights and, and that's how I, that's how I fell into it because one night I was warming up for a head candy DJ. Ah, okay. You know, it's that classic right yeah. place, right time. Yeah. Just everything fell into place. You know, I was playing some edits that I'd done. And um, I think, um, oh, who was there? There was there was a few couple of other people there, like um, on percussion and that. Um, yeah, and it was, it was a wicked night. It was really good. And it just, um, we just sort of clicked. It was Rob Wilder, actually, who I ended up oh, doing wow. loads of production with, yeah. Um, and you know, he was like, Oh, we should get in the studio, and da da da. And I was like, Yeah, cool. Um, and then literally a couple of days later, I got a phone call from Head Candy headquarters saying, Someone's broken their leg, can I cover for them in, in The Hague? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'd I never left Luton, do you know, what I mean? <laughs> hey, um, yeah, so that I was more scared of the flight. To yeah. the hate that I was of the of DJing, you yeah. know, I was really scared of flying, um, but I managed to get over it. And then, and then every week from then on, I was DJing for Head Candy. It was like, wow, it, literally, I know, I know. Looking back, I was very lucky. Mm. Um, I guess um, fortunate depends what way you look at it. It's interesting you say that though, because like, there's there's also that, like you said, like right place, right time, and so much of this industry, I think so much of life is about that, really. It, especially yeah. when you're not like applying for a job, if you know what I mean. It's it's yeah. very, but it, even that is still like luck of the draw. I think there's a, a a level of luck, but you do. There is pretty much for everybody I speak to. There's a point where it's like right place, right time. Hundred percent, and I guess. To be fair, if you're sat in your bedroom DJing, you, you're never going to be in that yeah. right place. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. you need to put yourself out there to a certain degree. Um, I mean, I was sending out, you know, this was in the days, this was around, um, I mean, my early career, I'm talking late 90s. Yeah. I was sending out tapes to record labels, you know, of my music and possibly dats. No, I think it was tapes and getting replies saying, you know, this is great, but not for us. Back in the days when they actually wrote back to you, <laughs> like Universal nice. Records. Yeah. Um, Were you so making I, Jungle then? Uh, no, I was making some weird stuff. I don't know what I was doing. It was like breakbeat. I was a big fan of Adam Freeland, mm -hmm. um, that yeah. sort of breakbeat stuff. Um, and I had a I had a couple of tracks out. I had a track out on Ugly Records um, called What Is Electro, which was it was like a four four waltz time kind of interesting. Yeah, it was really cool actually, um, and I had a couple of things out around 2000, I think that was, um, and I had a record out on Distinctive uh, Ink Records as well, which yeah. which did quite well around that time. So yeah, actually, I, I bought my first car with the Advance on that, and that was <laughs> I was really young, I was like 20 years old, and that that made me think actually. You know, this I could do something with this. Do you know what I mean? When you actually see sort of some kind of return for your hard work, because I, I sat there for hours, you know, making music. Well, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Is and I think that's what's. I'd like to get your opinion on what it was then and what it is now as well, because I think it's all changed with social media, where mm. now DJ and music industry is very 
people know you can make money from it. Mm -hmm. So it almost feels like people want it instantly. Yeah. And it's not that re <clears throat> realization that how many, God knows how many years you did with just slaving away and slaving away. And like, even to the point where you're at now, if you're in how many years does it take to actually get to that level where you can actually earn money from, yeah. from that was, do you feel like it was the same back then? I, I used to always say you've got to do 10 years yeah. before you earn any money. Yeah. And to, to do that 10 years, you have to have a blessed lifestyle. You know, you have to have parents that are going to yeah. back you up for, for 10 years. You know, my mum was great. My, my dad passed away when I was young, but my mum, she just never told me to get a job. Yeah. Ever. Or she never complained about the music. Me and my brother looked back and we're like, we like she's she must have she must have had some kind of vision for us or something because the so, music was insane Just imagine two bedrooms of jungle music does your you brother know. produce does your brother still write he, he used to yeah and he does now actually he's he's got back into djing and production now and he's nice. he's uh yeah he's djing around um but um yeah he got me into it so he he's four years older than me and he bought a load of studio gear yeah he, he was 17 and i was um yeah four years younger 13 no, that's not right. I was 17, I think, and he was 20, 21 when he bought the mm, proper gear, yeah. which I've still got, actually. I don't know if you can see it. Some some of the some of the gear behind me is still from that era, that's and the amazing. NS10s, they're original. Um, but anyway, he bought this gear and let me have free reign on it, which, you know, Thanks, was bro. amazing, yeah. to be honest. And I can't, he, he did a, a couple of summers in Ibiza as well, DJing at El Divino, Um and while he was away, I just got in the studio and got my head down and yeah. learnt, learnt my trade. And and he came back and realised, oh, wow, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> well, while I've been away, what, what's happened here? And, uh, and and he sort of started asking me to help make his records sound, you know, as good as the yeah. stuff I was doing. And that's how I kind of got into making other people's records sound good you know mixing yep. which i had no idea was a thing mm. you know i didn't and back then there wasn't any famous mixers um jeremy wheatley was the only one i'd heard of um but i didn't really know it was a job yeah um especially in like electronic music yeah like you hear like in like the pop days then yeah mm. but it's still it's still not really like a big, big thing now. No. It well, is. It is. It's bigger, isn't it? I mean, it's way bigger than what it is, but it's like. Thousands of mixers now. Thousands. Is there? I mean, yeah. Thousands. I, I guess because. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> because I've like. I don't really use mixers myself. So I. But I'm like in the process of like. I was talking to somebody at a label the other day. I was like, who do you guys use? Like. And yeah, I've just never really looked into how many mixes there are out there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There's a hell of a lot, you know. There's, and, and I remember back sort of 10 years ago, there was probably, I mean, it felt like anyway, there was probably five of us in the yeah. world. <laughs> it felt like we were doing everything. Yeah. Do you know, what I mean? yeah, that, yeah. that's how I genuinely felt. Um, and now it seems like, you know, a lot of things changed during COVID. Yeah. But it, it feels like a lot of people learned or, or had to learn to mix. And uh, yeah, there's just a hell of a lot of people doing it now. Um, and it's kind of become quite fashionable, I suppose. It's like, you know, it's a bit like DJing. Yeah. It's cool, you know. Yeah. I don't know why. It's not that cool, to be <laughs> honest. It, it looks cool. <laughs> It's hard work. <laughs> yeah, it is. I can imagine. It's hard work. Um, so yeah. let's, 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 I want to go back a little bit from Head Candy to the mm. transition of, okay, so you're make, started making people's record sound better. Start working for D Head Candy. Mm. What's the transition from Head Candy to, yeah. okay, I don't want to be a DJ anymore. Yeah, so production was always my thing. I started, I, I bought my first mixer at 11, really, for production purposes. Yeah. I wanted to mix, um, I think it was Terminator or Robocop, <laughs> soundtrack, like the spoken word, yeah. with, with a jungle beat. And I was like, how do I do that? And then I thought, oh, 
I need a mixer. Yeah. This is at 11 years old. Like, this is ridiculous. My dad bought me a mixer. Um, <laughs> and then I realised um, with these mixers, it was a Rode Club uh, MRT60 mixer. It was, like, really old. And I realised people had two turntables with them. So I was like, oh, I need a couple of turntables. So my dad bought me these Memorex turntables with no pitch <laughs> control. <laughs> And then, and then at that age, I wired up a pitch control to it with a soldering iron. Really? I, I wouldn't even know how to do that now. I took it apart. How? That circuit board, it was a plus and minus printed on the circuit board, yeah. and I just wired up a fader on it, and it, and it worked. I was like, I don't That's... know. How, how does this, these things happen? It's I just, wouldn't have even a... thought, about, thought of that. I don't think anybody thinks about things like that. I don't know what I was doing, <laughs> but, I mean, it's dangerous for a start. <laughs> um but yeah, it worked. Anyway, so that that was what got me into DJing. And then, um, yeah, but the transition, I guess, was it kind of felt natural because it, it was like, oh, we, you know, this is Wes, he DJs, but he also, he produces, can we yeah. use him, you know? And once I was in Head Candy, Head Candy, um, another twist of fate, got bought by Ministry of Sound two yeah. months after I joined. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And, and the guy that headed it, Phil Favisham, was... Um, an old friend of mine who I'd worked on a record with, I'd say friend, I mean, we, we literally didn't really know each other, but I recognised the name Fab, he recognised the name Wes from like, you know, five years before when yeah. we worked on a Danny Minogue record, um, randomly. I wrote, I wrote, uh, this, is, this is such a twisted journey I've had. <laughs> I wrote I wrote a song and Danny Minogue nearly used it. She didn't, but she nearly did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's not, that that's always such a strange concept as well for people that are yeah. listening that like that aren't in the music industry mm. like can you explain that whole situation when you write a record and somebody might take it or might not yeah i mean it was literally i wrote a whole album actually and one of the tracks don't know how it ended up in front of <laughs> phil Favisham, but um he was looking after Danny Minogue and they, they sent her down to demo it or someone down to demo it, not her, someone that sounds like her, to demo it. I will say no more. Um, and, yeah, it didn't happen in the end for some reason. I don't know why. You know, they probably demo a few and then choose another one. But but that would have that would have potentially changed my career path again. You know, I could have gone down songwriting route i suppose you know if that, if that was a hit record um so yeah it's funny how life twists and turns isn't it but um i you know i feel like i went down the right path um i knew i didn't want to so i i'd written this album yeah. I'm, I'm i'm going back and forth here, but i've written this out this was about 2000 so i was about i don't know 19 20 um 21 I don't know. Um, and then um, I'd written this album and, and the major labels were interested in it, um, like with me singing on this album okay. as well. Can you sing? Uh, well, auto-tune had just been invented. <laughs> <laughs> we had the first um, Antares box in the country, apparently, apart from the Spice Girls had one. We had one in the studio. It was a um, it was a hardware unit, yeah. And you roll it with MIDI. Mm. Um, Antares ART one or I can't remember something like that. Um, and yes, yeah, so I could sing with 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 the aid of of auto tune, <laughs> as everyone else. Um, but I was quite a good songwriter. I wrote I wrote this whole album of electronic pop songs. Cool. And. Um, but the first question, I think someone from Universal, someone came to meet me and their first question was, how do you see your live show? And I was like, I, I hadn't even thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> live? Um, I can't sing live. You've got to sing so, live. It was, it was literally the end of the conversation. Do you know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> so that, that just never happened. And I, I thought to myself, I just can't do it. I can't mm. be an artist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I cannot do it. Um, I haven't got the confidence. Um, yeah. So I went down a different path. Yeah. And it ended up, so I ended up, you know, DJing my local town and joining Head Candy. And then, um, so Ministry of Sound bought them. Um, and then there's Depeche Palmer. Do you, you know Depeche yeah. from Ministry? He's yeah, yeah. now, he's gone on to be head of Columbia, I think. Um, 
he's a good mate of mine. You know, I've known him for years. We've done so many hit records together now. But yeah, he he just started using me on a on a few things. And David Dollimore as well, um, who was head of uh, A and R Ministry at the time, um, and they just gave me um, just gave me a chance. Really, it was example was was the first thing yeah. I really did. Yeah. Um, and Kid Cudi Day and Night and um was River that the crookers Side. remix that you did yeah, yeah the crookers remix yeah because i don't know what i did on it to be i can't even remember what i did i think i mastered it. it it came to me really distorted and horrible um and i just like fixed it yeah yeah because i'm did... good mates with bot that's yeah. like one half of crook or used to be right one half okay of and i think i did the radio edit on it and a, a few other bits yeah do you know what i mean yeah that was it's, huge um, that record massive record yeah yeah, so that that was my first sort of taste of oh, oh this is quite enjoyable. Yeah, <laughs> and and I did Riverside as well. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, who's that? Who's that by? Riverside. Sydney Sampson. Yes, well done. Yeah, um, that's coming and, back. That record is it, mate? I'm hearing it everywhere. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I can't hear that record ever again, please. But yeah, it's coming back. It's crazy. It's a whole new generation. It's it's. What was that? 2011? Yeah. Jeez. 10 years ago. More than 10. Yeah. Jeez. Um, but we're all did the So the vocal version of that, me plus you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, that, um, I think they recorded that in my studio. Did um, they? I was a jack of all trades at that time. Mm. I was recording vocals. I was, you know, do you remember that? Um, that song uh, by Bingo Players, um, "Get Up Rattle." Yeah, yeah. The 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 radio version of that with the vocal on and all that. I think yeah. they recorded the vocals of mine. I whistled the. Uh... <laughs> that was me whistling, and I did some beatboxing on it as well. I was just like, whatever it took. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is the thing, isn't it? It's like it's going back to what we were talking about just like five minutes ago, where the whole like 10 years and it's mm. like, it takes so long to get to the point where you're actually doing exactly what you want and also working out exactly what you want. Cause like every, like I know my goals have changed in the last three years, in the last year of like what I want out yeah. of this, of this career. And I think mm. like you have to try everything. hundred percent. Yeah. You have to try everything. And also you have to be, you, you, you have to try everything for, for, from the respect that you, then you can focus on one thing if yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. Which I always think is the key mm -hmm. to absolutely smashing it. Focus on one thing. I, I remember my mate, um, he's now smashing it, doing sample replays, and he, he was doing DJing and all this stuff, and he watched me focus on one thing. Who's, who's that? Uh, Joe Hal Ritson. Yeah, Hal's done a few things for me. Yeah, so so he... He's great. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking any claim for his for his success. <laughs> by the way, we we shared studio space. Oh, really? For, for ten years, yeah. and he just watched me focus. He said to me once before, he watched me focus on mixing, and he was like, "I'm going to focus on sample replays." And he's absolutely he's the best. He's the best. He's he's the best. I've had I've had sample replays done by other people, and he's just the best. He's the best. Yeah, yeah. The best. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, yeah. So I'm totally responsible for his career. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll clip that out and send it to him. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And tell him I want, um, I want a credit. I five, want one percent. Five percent. Five percent, mate. Come on, not one percent. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go in hard. Um, yeah, but um, yeah. It's... Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, focusing on one thing. So I, I was yeah, literally jack of all trades. I remember um, even when I DJ'd at. Head candidate they used to call me Easy Jetter because because I'd fly anywhere. Yeah. I'd be like, Wes would do that. <laughs> Where, where's this gig? Uh, Columbia? Yeah, Wes would do that. Um, you know, war torn. I don't know anywhere with the war. <laughs> Wes would do that. Yeah, Wes would do that. Um, Antarctica. Yeah, I didn't do that actually. That was one I said no to. Wait, there, Antarctica there was, was actually an offer. There were, yeah, was it Antarctic or Arctic? One of them. One where's of the them. polar bears? They're both the uh, same, right? Both cold I as think fuck. The bears are on one. But anyway, they said to me that someone needs to be next to me with a gun at all times because of the polar bears. And I was like, do you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll give that one a minute. Who's raving in the Antar in Antarctica? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've made that story up. 
Uh, it's a great story, even if you did make it up. So it's fine. Come on, just, isn't it? Just roll with it. Yeah, I'm sure it happened. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. I used to DJ in, you know, Bogota. Have you played in Bogota? Yeah, yeah, yeah I played there. Uh, actually, great, this year, it? last year, mate, it's so good, so good. I they, love it. Yeah, Colombian people are the best. Yeah, but it was so far out my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, coming from Luton. <laughs> Well, it's just such different cultures, right? When you start traveling around the world. Did it Yeah. Did it ever make you realize how lucky we got it back in the UK? Um, yeah, 100%. Especially mm. touring around Brazil. Yeah. You know, places like that, seeing the favelas and uh, the sights and the smells around the favelas. And yeah, it's... it's And how safe it is here. Yeah. You know, I mean uncomfortable yeah it, you're right and and even san francisco and places like that you know the the sort of homeless yeah. situation it's it does open your eyes a hell of a lot yeah i've lived in the states for like over 10 years on and off now mm. no te about 10 years and yeah like even the states it, when i come back here i'm like we have it so good here like we're so like don't get me wrong we have our issues everywhere does but yeah in comparison it's unbelievable how good we got it yeah i agree i agree and that yeah the only the only place i found flying around where i was absolutely gobsmacked by how different it was was japan to be honest like yeah don't you think the rest of the world is kind of similar like in 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 say sense of humor and things like that yeah. everyone's sort of quite similar around the world and then you go to Japan and it's just like, <laughs> my God, it's like an alien country. It is, but the culture's fucking amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. I I, it. The thing that blew my mind back then was no one spoke English. It was like, yeah, can you can you teach me English? Can you teach me English? I was like, probably not. No, because I can't speak Japanese. <laughs> I mean, I just said no one. I think I should have said nobody, right? I can't even speak English myself. <laughs> Coming from Luton. <laughs> exactly, from Luton and I. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't. Um, when I moved to London, I got told to change the way I speak. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbour, who's a banker, did you, you won't survive around here speaking like that. I was like, okay. And I did, I changed. <laughs> really? Where was your first first place in London? Uh, Clapham. I lived in Clapham for 10 years. Yeah. Nice. Clam, yeah. Clam. So, yeah, you Clam can imagine. Time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, some posh it was people. Great, I loved it. But um, so, so when did you? When were you like, okay, I have to, I have to like, stop doing jack of all trades and yeah, go so, into mixing. Yeah, so I, I moved to London because it was Phil Faversham said, "Move to London, the streets are paved with gold." Literally said that to me, and I was like, oh, "All right." <laughs> yeah. So I did at twenty nine. I moved to London, and uh, I moved. Well, I, I I moved into the studio next to Howard Ritson. Um, which was 10 minutes from Ministry of Sound. Yeah. It was all, you know, it was all planned. It used to be Chase and Status's studio, actually. Um, they, yeah, I moved in after them. Um, and, yeah, it just kind of, just kind of flowed from there, really. Um, and we, um, yeah, I, I started doing stuff for Ministry probably... A few years before that, obviously it was all, yeah, I didn't just move there, you know, yeah. on a whim. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was kind of planned. Um, and, then, and then just got, it just got super crazy, to be honest, around that time. Because I remember, I can't, I can't put a year on it, if I'm honest, but I remember when I heard you were mixing, when you'd become like the mixer. Yeah, and there was this a period of time when like everyone was using you. Yeah. I know everyone still uses you now, but there was it. it oh, you're right. It kind yeah. of came to like a, a point where I'm like, "Fucking hell, what's what's Wes doing?" If what's you know going I mean. on? Because I, I and I, it's interesting to hear it from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. So I, I, I wondered if people thought that as well. Like, where's this guy come from? He was DJing, and now he's mixing. But yeah. actually. I was always mixing. Yeah, and Should we didn't know that from an outsider's point of view. Yeah. yeah, and I thought I thought people might think that's a bit strange. So that's why I stopped DJing, which was your question a minute ago. Wasn't it? I stopped DJing when I was 30. Um, 
because I thought people might think it waters down mm-hmm. mixing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, oh, he's in clubs every weekend. How how is he? Is it, how can he hear anything in the week? Yeah, <laughs> which is, it's true. true. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember mixing um, examples first album. Or was it second album? I can't remember. With an ear infection, with one oh. ear, I mixed the whole thing with one ear. I never told him. It sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> <He'll know that. laughs> um, yeah. It's amazing what you can do though, isn't it? When you're limited. Do you know what I mean? Like you- Limitations are so, so key. I like, I've got this thing. I've just working on a project. I've just finished working on a project. Um, but I've got this thing where I want to write an album on like two pieces of like, of gear and a vocalist and just like, you have to use this drum machine. Yeah. 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 And you're just like, what? Because I think there's just so much out there now. Like that's you, why I love the, having the console. Mm, because yeah. Yeah. She used the console. It's like, oh, I haven't got 75, you know, plug in EQs. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, to be fair, when I produce, I'm really, I do only use like one reverb. I only use one EQ. Yeah. I just can't be. I also, I, when I go into sessions with people and they have like one reverb on like a vocal and then on the drums, they've got a different, completely different reverb, like different brand, different everything. I'm like, you're, you're using two different rooms. The whole point of a reverb is that you're creating space in for a room. If you use two different reverbs, it's not the same room. So it's not going to sound right. 100%. It's weird, but I think it's. Also, just because we have so much option. It's the same as music now, if you know what I mean. It's the same with Spotify. It's like we have so much option out there. It doesn't, it waters it down. Yeah, too many options. But Even you, like, yeah. But yeah, going back to the, 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 the when that all kind of kicked off for you. Yeah. Was that around yeah. the example stuff? That was around, I reckon 2014 yeah. was when it went crazy. I mean, that's when I did clean bandit and mm. all the jessica and stuff um or well maybe 2013 around that time I, I had like i was, it was me and depeche were having so many number ones um i don't even know maybe 10 in that year or something wow. crazy do you know what i mean it was like it got it got to a point where i was like oh nothing number one do you know what i mean let's <laughs> just go home and have a pizza but looking back like that was that was the time. Yeah. You know I mean, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sort of celebrated more, but you never do, do you? If you, I, I always think that like, if you celebrate too hard, then you take your eye off the ball and you kind of become complacent. But yeah, it's on to the um, next. Yeah, and there, there was a, even a time where the, the head of music at Radio One was saying you need a Wes Clark mix wow. if you want to get a playlist, and that like that for me was when I thought, wow what's going on here? Like this, do you know what I mean? That you can't buy that kind of thing. We probably could, if you had enough money, add a, add a couple of zeros onto that, onto that coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. But, um, yeah, not my computer's doing some, some weird noise. Hang on a second. No worries. There you go. Did that the other day. I hope it doesn't keep doing it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It, That's a pretty, that, that, how does that feel though? I mean, looking back, it was amazing. But yeah. like I said, at the time, I just kind of was in the middle of it all. And it was so busy, but like I was doing probably at least two, well, at least one or two mixes a day, every day, um, which was full on, you know, not yeah. every day. I was, I was having weekends off, but I was, I was doing, around that period, I was doing um, eight in the morning till eight at night in the yeah. studio. And... I won't lie. I didn't, I wasn't enjoying it. Mm, makes sense. I really wasn't enjoying it. Um, I went into robot mode for a long time. Um, and yeah, I was having loads of, it was killing me. If I'm honest, it was absolutely killing me. The pressure and um, the hours, not seeing daylight, you yeah. know, eight to eight. You, and I had no windows in my studio at the time. I've, I've got windows now. Um, that's such an older know. thing to do. Is, <laughs> is when you're when you're um when you get yeah. older and it's like I need windows in my studio. Yeah, it shouldn't be an older thing though. You should learn that at school, shouldn't you? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's cool to have a dark studio. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It also saps all the vibes out of everything. I hate it now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. It is cool, isn't it, for some reason? I think it's just it's like the right. stereotype of what a studio should look like. Yeah, it shouldn't have windows. Yeah, and then and then you get older and you think actually I'm I'm past I'm done with being cool. Yeah, I need, I need a view. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, Go, yeah. going back to the not enjoying it. No, exactly. And now you know it, it. It's that classic burnout thing. I did burn out. I my I yeah. I got ill. Um, my, well, my body. I I firmly believe that my body created an illness to tell me to slow down. Yeah. Um, I got this cough and I thought oh, I just cough. So I carried on working and the cough kept getting worse and worse. And eventually um, got something called costrochondritis, which is where all your ribs basically dis- dislocate from coughing too much. Oh. Yeah. It was so painful. And um, I remember waking up one morning <laughs> and uh, I couldn't breathe. I don't know why I'm laughing. I couldn't breathe. And the only person I, I could call was my mum, and I couldn't talk or breathe. And she, she was like, <laughs> and then she rang an ambulance yeah you could tell something was going on um and then the ambulance driver came and he said if you don't slow down he, weirdly enough he looked at my gold discs on the wall and he said are you a mixer maybe he read it on the thing but i don't yeah. know it's a weird question right? that is a are weird a question completely out of blue. i said yeah and he said oh he said, he said if you don't slow down you're gonna die that's Jesus. literally what he said he said i go to people like you every day if you don't slow down, you'll die. And that, that for me was like, okay, say no more. So, um, yeah, from that day, I, 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 I thought I'm only going to do one mix a day from now. On. Yeah. That's <laughs> a two. lot. That's a lot. Not doing two anymore. Yeah. I just, I just sort of backed off a bit and thought, do you know what? I've been a bit greedy. I was being a bit greedy if I'm honest. Um, and Is yeah, it, just I, 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 I kind of want to like challenge that though. Because mm. maybe you are you were being greedy, but I mm. think there also comes a point in your career when you've worked God knows how long and you've earned a reasonable living, right? Like you, as a head can you resident, you were earning okay money. Yeah. If you know what I mean, it wasn't like like it was, I mean at the time it was amazing, money, yeah. right? It was like geez, whereas I I went from earning nothing exactly, so, yeah. yeah. But then you go into overdrive into mixing and you go okay well i'm earning a lot more money now or just eventually uh and then i don't know if if you have this i i know i have this but it's like it's almost that take it now because you don't know how long it's gonna last 100 percent, yeah and and i think yes there is a level of you could call that greedy to a certain extent but it's also that like you have to realize that no actually I have a skill and people are going to want this for the rest of their lives or for the rest of my career. But to realize yeah. that is so hard when you've done 10, it's 15 possible. years of not earning any money doing the career and also seeing everybody come up behind you. There's always yeah. somebody clapping away at your heels that want to take yeah. the job yeah. that wants to do it a lot cheaper than you. hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, yeah. Maybe greed, greed was the wrong word, but I, I fell into the trap of thinking, Oh, if I do, one mix a day and this much. If I do two mix yeah. a day and double, do you know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. why wouldn't you do two a day? Okay, I'll do that. But, and, and to this day, to be honest, we've never said no, me and my manager, I've, I've had the same manager, Hannah Joseph, for, for years as well. We've never actually said no to any work because of, you know, too much work is on. We've, we've yeah. said no to things that I don't believe in or feel like I can bring anything to the table. Totally. I think that's important. Um, but yeah, we just, we've just always just been like, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And <laughs> like, you know, she's booking all this stuff in my diary. And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. And oh, yeah. And it got to the point where I was like, oh, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. Um, but yeah, so I had a little bit of a burnout for, for a minute and then it didn't last long to be honest. I kind of got back, uh, back into it and, and never hit it as hard. Yeah. You know, um, by the way, I've, I've never done drugs or anything like that. I wasn't like caning it and doing all this. Like, yeah. I'm, you know, the burnout was completely natural. Just from no, like, pure oh, work, oh. overwork. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just pure work. The burnout's real, though, because I think a lot of people don't talk about it in this industry. And I think it mm. it's a crazy industry to work in. 
it is crazy and you know you and when i dj i used to drink but i never I, i'm glad i never did drugs because yeah. i don't think i'd be here today yeah like yeah you know it, it would have been so full-on um just the traveling alone is killer as you know yeah. you know it's yeah, yeah. it's not easy yeah I, I don't drink and i don't do drugs and all my mates that do around me i'm like i don't know how you guys are surviving that plane especially you know as we get older my mates are still some of my mates are still doing that i'm like yeah. jesus you need to be careful now yeah. it's like <laughs> you know um but yeah it's it's interesting that that we're we're on a similar similar sort of thought process with the drink and drugs thing um i think i think it's also people don't think about it in the grand scheme of things because it's so part of the industry it's so like yeah, and everyone i meet assumes i just yep they don't even ask me they just assume yep that you must have done drugs when you were DJing. Yeah. Like, and i'm like well, no <laughs> i didn't ever yeah but um yeah i don't know it's it's a bit annoying actually when you meet you know new people and they assume that I think but, uh, I think it's because it's so part of the culture. I think what annoys me the most is when people like question why and also uh, yeah, like and try, <laughs> yeah, and try and like push it on you. And I'm like, no, it's, that's that's weird. But then they're just the people that I just don't hang around with. They just it's a stupid stupid question, isn't it? It's like yeah. it's never even entered my mind to 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 do anything. And it's like it's like why don't you smoke? I don't think anyone would necessarily ask that, would they? No, why, why don't not you? at all. Yeah, yeah. Because it's really bad for you. <laughs> and I've never felt the need to smoke. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Same with drugs. It's like, why Why did you never do drugs? Yeah, it's, I don't know. To be fair, I mean, I'm sure they're great and fun in some respect, as long as you can keep them under control. But keep... I don't think I would have been able to keep them under control. <laughs> that's that's my, the thing, isn't that, it? That's my personality. I'm like all in, you know, yeah. with everything. Um, yeah, I have to, I have to win everything. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a really interesting mindset. Do you think that's why you became so successful in mixing? A hundred percent. And I also like, you know, going way back to childhood, I, I, when all my mates were, um, playing football every Sunday, I was BMX racing, yeah. which is very solo sport. Yeah. Just me. Um, and I think that's quite interesting. Um, cause working in music, well, especially as a mixer, especially, or maybe a mastering engineer is, is such a solo, Yeah, it, it's, it's quite a lonely actually existence. You know, you're, I mean, I've, I've never really had, um, an assistant either. So I've literally been in rooms on my own most of my career, yeah. just sitting there, you know, with, with music, um, all around me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird existence. Um, which is probably why, yeah, I, I had that sort of time where I burnt out because it was just, I think, you know, if, if I'd had someone there to bounce off, they might have picked up on it and said, totally. you need to slow down. Chill out. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, um, How does that work with relationships for you as well? Outside. I mean, back then, I just, it, yeah, I was just, I couldn't have had a relationship at that, at that time. Yeah. There's no way. Um and when I was DJing, I couldn't have either because I was just never in the country. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been difficult. Didn't really settle down till sort of quite a lot later. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't change the path. I was going to say, is there any, is there any like regret there? Uh, no. No, I don't. I don't have any regrets. That's good. I, I honestly feel like. I've never had a plan either. And I guess that's my theory is if you don't have a plan, you can't regret anything. Right. Cause you, nothing's gone wrong. Is it? True. It's like, I, I read somewhere the other day, someone said something to do with the way the universe is. Everything you do is wrong. Like you, you, nothing you do can be right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way of the universe. That's the biggest it's head wrong. fuck. It's the biggest yeah, head. I fuck. like it though. It's good. right? Yeah. Nothing you do is right. It can only be wrong. So stop trying. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's where I'm going wrong. I set too many goals. And then it's yeah. like and then and you then look you, at it. Yeah, at then the you end. don't yeah. If you don't reach them, you get you get you get down. I've never really yeah, I've never really had a plan. Um 
I've just meandered through life, <laughs> but I've been really lucky, you know, or fortunate. I hate the word lucky. Actually, I don't use it. Uh, I've You've been worked fortunate. hard, man, for it, and it's been yeah. it's paid off, right? It's like that's what it's there for, and you can sh- yeah. you can show that. Um, uh, hundreds, yeah, thousands of hours, tens of thousands of hours of work. Yeah, it, you know, yeah, it has been a hard slog. What's it like winning a Grammy? Um, it's a funny one winning the Grammy. Yeah. I remember someone said to me, you, you've won that too young. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're too young to win a Grammy. I was like, wow. Who hey. was that? That person needs to fuck off. No, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought it was a really pessimistic thing to say, but actually looking back, uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing to say. Um, there's, there's, For me, in, there's certain things in this career that I feel like if happens too young... Yes, you're right. Like I think a hit record too young is not good. Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. And um, I get why I get why they said that. I understand because you you can become complacent. Yeah. It's almost like where'd you go from winning a Grammy? It's like you yeah. win another Grammy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Yeah, there's it's like uh, but to me to be fair, my goal was never to win a Grammy. I'd never even thought about it until it happened. Or randomly my manager did say that year, she said, what do you want to do this year? And I said, win a Grammy. And then we won a Grammy, which was pretty weird. <laughs> That's I, cool. just read, I just read The Power of Now as well. Oh, really? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that book changed my life as well. Did it that... really? I've not, I've not listened to it or read it. I'm not to it. I don't, so, I, I don't, so I don't read books. I never read books. Oh, I hate there's reading. There's one book, one book you read in your life, read The Power of Now. I'm, I'm going to listen to it. Because I, I listen to your audiobooks. I, I, you know what? I listen. I listen to it um, a lot. I probably read it for the first time ten years ago, and I listen to it, you know, daily. Yeah, really on, on repeat. Yeah, it doesn't do what it did back then, yeah. but uh, <laughs> back then it just blew my mind. It was like, oh, oh, live in the moment. Like no one had ever talked about it before. I was like, all oh, right, what's that about then? And you know, you kind of do it without thinking sometimes, but a lot of the time you're not. Um, yeah, it's it's very like it, my record label is called All We Have Is Now. I noticed, like, yeah. It's like yeah. it's a big thing for me to yeah. like try and live in the moment. Hundred percent. But it's fucking hard. It's fucking hard. But one thing I always think, which blows my mind, is technically from the day you're born to the day you die, you're in the same moment. Yeah. Well, it's just one continuous moment. The only thing deep, that breaks man. it up is that's the deep. <laughs> the fact that you sleep every night is the only thing that makes you think, oh, it's a different day, isn't yeah. it? Like otherwise you'd just be continuously living yeah. in the same moment. That's weird know. to think about that. It is weird to think about, but I think about it quite a lot. I don't know why. No, but I like I like that concept. Yeah. But there is only one moment and you're in it. Yeah. I guess my question for you, because going through your career we all do things we don't want to do and you kind of have to do things that you don't want to do because that's just the way life is right yep is there a part of your career that you don't like doing that you still have to do now yeah or if there isn't when was it when you were like i'm just gonna stop doing all of that yeah, I, I must admit, I didn't like, um, uh, like really, if we want to go really specific, yeah. I didn't like um, vocal editing and comping and yeah. auto tuning. Um, that whole thing for me was just a chore. Yeah. But some people absolutely smash it, and some people charge way more money than I charge for a mix just to do that job. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's a thing. Um, but for me, it was a chore. And I hated it, especially recording vocals as well. Jeez. Um, but yeah, it's something I had to do sometimes, yeah. you know, to to get the mix work. I had to record the vocals on it to, you know. Yeah. Um, but now, no, there's nothing really. Um, yeah, the, the, the sort of the major ball ache before was printing stems after your mix, you know, and historically that was quite a long job took hours but now i've streamlined the way i work and it just takes one pass and yeah. i've printed stems so you know 
I think the older you get, the wiser you get, I suppose, and, totally. and the more streamlined your approach is. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, though, if you look back at it, like, you can go into your studio every single day and enjoy everything you do. Mm. That's the goal, right? Yeah, it is. And you do have to keep reminding yourself how amazing it is. It's like what you said, how how good we've got it in England compared to to some countries in the world. Like, just actually yesterday... No, when was when was the day? Was it yesterday, Monday? On Sunday, I was driving, and um, I was going to Soho Farmhouse actually just to show like how how you know you're nice so life bougie. is. I'm you're not a member so, by the way. Was, you're not a member. Okay, good. We can uh, we can still be friends. <laughs> I'm not a member. I was just going for the ride, but um, I was just driving along thinking, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Life's great, and not not for any particular reason. The sun was out. Yeah. That was what I was thinking. Do you know what I mean? It's not because I'm sitting there going to Soho Farmhouse, but it just felt, I don't know. I just had a moment. Yeah. No, <laughs> I it's, think you, need, you need to. You need to, man. And like, it, it's weird. It's really weird, this industry. And it's life's strange generally, but I think it's, it's very easy to look at everybody else around you, right? And compare yourself to everybody in yeah. this industry. And I'm, and I, I know that's the same for other industries, but I can only really talk about ours because it's all I, all I know. It's very easy to kind of go through that and like, oh, that person's doing that. Why can't I do that? Or why aren't I there? Or like, I'm happy for them that they, they've got that, but I should be doing this or I should be doing yeah. something similar. And then when you really sit back and just be like, you know what? we're doing i'm doing what i love mm. and sometimes it's, i don't know about you but like i've lost the love for it a lot a, f a few times where you, i'm just like more so recently where you're just like what what is, what is all this for if you yeah. know what i mean but i think if you sit down and reflect it's like we have it pretty fucking good yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i think it's important one thing you said there is it's the competition thing. Um, I think it's important in life in general, isn't it? Not to not to be in competition. What is it? The comparison is the thief killer of joy. Of, yeah. Killer of joy. Yeah, thief uh, of joy, yeah. Thief of joy, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't matter how successful you get, how much gear you get. You know how much equipment, how much, how many number ones you've had. There's always Somebody someone bad. to compare yourself with and feel really bad about yourself. It's yeah. like, um, um, it's partly why I ended up buying this bloody console because I had a small one before and I felt really inferior. <laughs> 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 so I was like, I rang SSL. I was like, I want the, I want the bigger one, but I don't know if it will fit in my room. And Mike at SSL was like, Yeah, it will. But so I already measured it. <laughs> Measured it last time I was down. Uh, he knew that phone call was coming. So funny. They've got you. They've just got, got you by the balls, mate. <laughs> got you by the balls. I knew that phone call was coming. So funny. He'd already paced out my room, so he knew it would fit. I was, um, at, I was at a car dealership yesterday, and they're exactly the same. They, yeah. they just know. They know. They know, you're, they know they're start you off on this, yeah. and you're back for this. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I respect, I respect it. Like... Yeah. To a certain extent, I'm like, yeah. But you've got a fucking nice desk. Well, yeah. <laughs> do I you, have now. Do you use it I all day? I feel fulfilled now. Do you use I, it all? I, I use it every day, yeah. No, but do it. you use all of it? Oh, well, someone asked me that the other day, do, do, you, do you turn every button, like turn every knob and push every button? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looks good, there's, though. Probably, there's definitely certain ones I've never touched. Yeah. Um, but... I use it every day. Yeah. I use every channel every day. Yeah. And I will do till the end of my career. I'm sure. Um, yeah. So like the NS 10s, I've used those every day since 1997. Wow. <laughs> do you know what I, mean? so, I can't stand those speakers. I don't know why everyone uh, loves them. I don't think anyone loves them. They, they just sound awful. They sound shit, but that's, that's, that's the, the whole point. That's, yeah, I know. I get it. Um, I've got my good speakers and then I've got my bad speakers. They're not bad, actually. They're good. They're just like a... I always see them as like a, a section of yeah. sound. 
uh, this section. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rather than, yeah, they do what they do. I guess my question is, is are people listening on worse speak or, or on the same level of NS10s nowadays? I don't think they are. I think everything uh, is better than them. It, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Probably the iPhone speakers better. Literally, than yeah. Have better frequency range. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Maybe I should get rid of them. No, don't get rid of them. You love them. It's fine. <laughs> I just won't be no, buying it any. It's just, it's just 20, 20 odd years, 25, 27 years of, of hearing them. Yeah. It's like just know my, brain, my brain knows what they sound like. Yeah. Um, same with this. Where are you? This, this. This <laughs> oh, okay. a, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. little tiny speaker I used yeah. to have next to my bed for ten years in London that I just Steer I woke it. up with it every morning. Yeah, I know how music should sound on it, so it's in my studio. It's funny that because I've I've toyed for years to get new monitors in my studio, and because I have a place here and I have a place in Detroit, and where are you now? I'm in England at the moment. How are you? Okay. Yeah. Um, and. Oh, hence the uh, hence the cushion blend. Yeah, I don't know why there's a Scottish cush- cushion there because I'm not Scottish, so like at all. Yeah. I don't know why I ever. I don't. I think somebody bought that for me. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, um, not calm, either, but calm. Yeah. No, just <laughs> calm and carry on. Can't, keep keep calm, calm and carry on. All I can see is calm and carry. <laughs> calm and carry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I was always worried about that as well. Is like I've no I know these monitors so well. What have you got? Just Adam A7. I mean... They're not the best. Stick with them. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. I, I've got these... these. I don't even know how to say it. Guy, Guy Thane RL901Ks I used. Mm. Um, with the subs. And when I bought them, um, Olaf, who makes the speakers, said to me, Are you sure you want the subs? Nobody has the subs. And I was like, that's why I want the subs. Yeah. He's like, they won't be flat anymore. I was like, I don't want flat. I want nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I, these speakers for me, the first time I heard them, I, so I went in um, the shop to buy barefoots. Yeah. I just had it in my head. I wanted a pair of barefoots. Of I course. They look cool. It's the go-to, right? Uh, yeah, or, or Adams. Um, yeah. Was it Adams? The big ones. Can't remember. No, it wasn't. Uh, I can't ATC. remember what it was. Like. There was, it was two speakers I was... Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think yeah, it was those. Yeah. Um, but they're not the big ones, the smaller ones. And I went in and compared them and they sounded so different to each other. I was yeah. just confused as hell. I was like, barefoot sounded one way and these other ones sounded well. So I was like, ah, I don't really know where I stand now. I'm yeah. confused. And I went upstairs and just before I left, the, the guy was like, oh, you should you should listen to these guy fans. Um He said, you won't, you won't want to mix on them, but just have a listen. And I sat there and I went, Jesus Christ, like that... <laughs> Do you know, you know when it, you know when something just feels like home. Like, yeah. I, you know when you meet someone, you feel like you know them. It's that kind of vibe. Um, and they were like double the price of Beth. <laughs> I, like, I had to had to buy them. Get them. Are they the ones that are like hand built? I don't know if they're hand. I, 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 it's funny because I I bought them in the end from direct from. Um, it's Sweden. Olaf. Is it in Sweden? Germany. Germany. Uh, it's, okay. uh, I'm thinking Guy, of... Guy is, a, is the village they're made in. Uh, okay, I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Um, and so the guy Olaf um, I was dealing with to buy them, I thought he was the salesperson, but it turned out he like he made them as well. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, because I had a, when he when he sent them to me, one of them had a little issue on transit, and and he, I said, oh, who do I speak to? And he said, me, speak to me. I was like, okay. <laughs> It's like a one man band. Love that. Um, I think they're pretty big in Germany though. But um oh man, these speakers, they're I, I always think they're the best speakers in the world. And my um my old stepdaughter, previous stepdaughter, I don't know how to even say it, my ex stepdaughter, <laughs> my ex's daughter, <laughs> yeah. she um she said to me, she came in my studio and she was like, Oh, my granddad's got those speakers. And I said, Nah, your granddad won't have those speakers. <laughs> anyway. My granddad came to visit one day and he walked in and he was like, I've got those speakers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? And he, and he said, they're the best speakers in the world, aren't they? And I was like, that's what I tell everyone. Really? I've not, yeah, I've never yeah. heard of the brand. No, I know. Well, yeah, I'm selling them here. You I, are. I'm on a are you on a commission, like a affiliate link? 5%. Yeah. No, I, speakers are a strange one. 
because realistically, the more you spend, the better you get. That I feel like that is the case with speakers. Yeah. Uh, I don't know though, because it's like million pound speakers, aren't they? And it, surely. True. Like there's a level. At that, at that point, I've seen I've seen these million pound sound systems, and they're in such shit rooms. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but what what what's the point in that? Yeah. I mean, you haven't treated your room at all, and you just got this this weird sound system in there. How have you treated your room? Uh, that's a good question. I was about to say I haven't treated it, but I have. Um, I didn't really need to treat it because when I moved in, it it was translating pretty well, yeah. but it was a bit light. Um, but then I've got these, I've yeah. got these things, just... and this whole back thing is a massive um, diffuser. It's a membrane absorber. Mm. The front of it's sort of diffusing. Behind it, there's a huge rubber membrane um, absorber. And then behind that, there's a stack of probably 11 stacks of rock wall. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and it's all hidden nicely. Yeah, it looks great. But it did, yeah, it did wonders for the room. There's a lot of rock wall in this room hidden away. Um, and it's got really high ceilings, like three, three and a half meter, I think mm. they are high, which is probably the key actually to a yeah. good room you've got high ceilings there as well so yeah these are like is it vaulted yeah really high wow yeah it's so important because most people neglect the ceiling height you know they're like oh dimensions of the room but they forget about the height yeah. and then you end up with your speakers most most rooms are 2.4 meters high mm -hmm. and your speakers are at ear level halfway between the ceiling and floor yeah just get all sorts of problems. Yeah, um, my, my place in Detroit, I I got an acoustician to come in and and do it because it was so, it sounded so awful, but it was lower ceiling, and yeah, that my speakers still sound terrible in there because the room's so big. Yeah, um, but I always say like, you, just get your speakers out of that middle between. You know, if you yeah. could lower them and then lower your chair, you might end up like sitting so like this bad. monitoring. Yeah, but. Yeah. It will sort. It will sort a lot of the problems out. Um, I did. I did um, studio design at university. By the oh, way, oh, did was, you? Yeah, I don't really remember much about. It. It's such a grey art, to be honest. Um, acoustics, but yeah, that was what my dissertation was on: studio design. So, but, did you, you design yours, or did you get somebody else to do it? Um, well, this guy, I didn't really design this. It just kind of. I, I moved into this room when I bought this house. So it's in your house. Place. Yeah, it's in, it's in, yeah, it's, it's sort of on the, it's connected to my house. Yeah. It's not yeah. in the house as yeah. such. Um, but it's, it's an old library, it's an old Georgian house. And oh, this nice. was the library originally. Um, and so I moved, I moved the console in here temporarily when I moved in, I was going to build a huge studio in the garden. Um, but then everyone that came in was like, oh, your studio is wicked. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's quite cool, isn't it? Um, and then I realized it actually sounds quite good as well um, for various reasons. Because of the high ceilings, it's got, it's got like, it's kind of surrounded by other, other rooms. Like behind here, there's a corridor. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a weird setup. Um, and underneath there's like storage units. Um, so it's like a floating room, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. Just somehow bass sounds good in here and, and when you're outside you can't hear it it just disappears somewhere it's like the magical that's great the magical room <laughs> yeah even if you're in the the living room next door you can't hear any any really? bass it's like, yeah it's the weirdest thing um and, they, and you know i've got i've got four 16 inch subs in there four so yeah yeah well probably two working to be fair i think when when you connect the top two to the bottom two i think it probably creates them as a mid but yeah i have um that's a good yeah, amount of subs, subs. Yeah, that's what that's what Olaf said. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave he gave me the remotes to turn them off. It's yeah. like you, you know, and I've never turned them off. Ever. <laughs> Just constantly. literally never. I pressed play and I was like, "Jeez, that's <laughs> that's how it sounds." I had them without the sub for maybe six years, and then um, and then I got the subs and I was like, "That's that's it." There's something about a, a good sub. I've got a really, sh I don't have subs in this studio, in my Detroit studio. I've, I bought a really shit cheap sub and it's mm. not good. But when you go into a room and it's like all sounds warm and you're just like, oh, this is yeah. heaven. 
I, I used to use um, Optimum Mastering um, in yeah. Bristol. And I went in and did a few like in-person mastering sessions and he's got like the PMC stack, the like big nice. fucking, and you just go in there and you're like, this just sounds amazing. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, Metropolis have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So How much of a game changer is it having your studio in your house? Um, game changer or game killer? Uh, it's kind of it's kind of <laughs> pros and cons. Yeah. Um, I think it's potentially a relationship killer. <laughs> it was it was during COVID at least. Um, it was difficult during COVID because obviously, well, uh, I, yeah, I split up with my uh, with my partner um who i was with then and uh it's just a lot of pressure coming in here every day and you know we had three children yeah. and they, they were out there and uh yeah i was in here in my own little world and then yeah. sort of walked into this other world every evening i was like Whoa. what's going on yeah yeah it was hard it's hard it's hard from that respect um but obviously there's pros and cons you know i roll out of bed it's like it's like you you said I see I speak to you in twenty earlier and I was like oh <laughs> I didn't realise yeah. oh, well, we were speaking in two hours <laughs> but, um, I'm here do you know what I mean it's yeah like, yeah yeah in the house um yeah you just you just sort of always there and you can dip in and out you know um when I was in London I guess I guess it suits me now in my at my stage of life um, when I was in London it was more regimented you know I went to work and I was there all day and left. Yeah, yeah, I kind of did. I ended up kind of doing like ten till six. Yeah, that was my day. Never, never worked weekends. I think that's important. Um, obviously, not if you're a DJ, but um, <laughs> <laughs> could be an issue. That's the thing but, I struggle yeah. with is actually doing the day off. Yeah, when to what? When when do you have a day off? I don't. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Yeah, and, and it, I, but it's more so. I've never really liked taking days off because I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I don't like it either, but my manager taught me it's, you've got to do it. Yeah. And she, she just never let me work weekends. And it was, I feel like, yeah, that that's really important. Well, I think the thing that for me that I struggle with the most, and it's almost like, I kind of have like two lives, one in England and one in America. Yeah. And my life in America is very selfish it's like it's just around me just me like i've i've got a few friends where they in detroit where i live but like it's just me and then in yeah. the uk obviously i grew up here i have all my family here i have every like all my old friends and everything like that so it's a lot less selfish and but also when you actually have a day off it's like then just filled with everything because it's like you yeah. have to see everybody you have to because you're not i'm not here for that long so it's not that i'm complaining but it's just i it's the one thing i i need to learn to do and i i do really want to work on like accepting that like i don't have to be in the studio every day yeah yeah i think it's i think it's important um but it is difficult yeah it, it is something you need to accept as well that's a yeah. good word because your brain tells you, oh, I should be doing something. I should be, I should be working on getting where I want to be. Or yeah. do you know, I mean, it's, everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is working. Of but <clears throat> it's that burnout thing, you know, it's, you don't want to burn out. That's the thing. Yeah. In there and it's not nice. Yeah. It's not fun. No. It's not fun at all. And, and yeah, one, one, like, your body will create an illness. That that is my belief. If if it wants you to stop, it will make yeah. you stop somehow. Yeah. You don't want it to be a bad illness. That's the That's the thing, know. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a few going around at the moment. You just like a few artists and you're like, fuck. Like mm. you just it's so unfortunate. So yeah. unfortunate just to see and you're just like, Yeah, it makes sense. Actually, yeah, no, you're right. I'm yeah, I see a few people I've worked with over the years right now that, that are going through some awful Yeah. Yeah and it is it's hard to watch but um also there's the you know the the sort of mental side of it as well isn't there that yeah not so obvious but um yeah yeah totally totally that's the thing i think that's the that's the worst to be fair because yeah. it's like it's so un although mental health is fashionable to talk about and everything like that yeah. but like it's it's 
hard to see it if you're a manager if you're an agent if you're an artist if you're a friend it's hard to it's easy just to keep going right it's it's really hard you know you look at Avicii you know it's it's hard yeah. to say I don't want I can't do this gig tonight because my mental health's not in the right place you can't yeah. you do you know what I mean no one's gonna take you seriously either. if you say I've got a broken leg yeah well maybe it's not working fair enough but I'm not feeling up to it tonight it's not really a good enough excuse it's weird and i think the thing is as well it's not, it's like it's not just one gig that you're not feeling up to it's probably the whole year that you yeah. don't actually want to do and yeah. it's just like a case of like you know what i actually just need to stop for a year but Christ, yeah. but then also i think it the way i look at it as well is like it's not just me if mm. i don't turn up to work my whole team don't earn money Exactly. That was the problem Avicii had, wasn't it? Like yeah. the pressure of, of the team, not trying not to let them down. But yeah, it's like, I only mentioned Avicii because I, yeah, did, I did a few tracks with him in yeah. the Ministry of Sound Days. And it's just like, so, so sad, you know. Especially when it's like somebody so talented, but also like, like so influential at that time, right? Like what they're... Yeah. It, I guess the positive, there's no positive, but if you wanted to look at a positive, like the impact that somebody like him had on the world is pretty Kurt Cobain, classic example, right? Like yeah. a lot of these artists, Amy Winehouse, like there's a reason why they're so fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason. And yeah, yeah like there's not many yeah. people that survive it that are that special. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, there comes a point where where you, you you're human again. Yeah. It's like you're only human. Yeah. Not superhuman. If you were superhuman you could survive it, right? Yeah. But yeah, none of us are. So I feel like yeah, that's that's the ceiling, isn't it? When when you start suffering and you if 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 you can notice it and pull back. Yeah you'll get through it right yeah it's Noticing. how important is it for you of having a good team around you because you mentioned you've been with your manager for forever yeah it's really just me and her to be honest and it's been so important i can't yeah. i can't sing her praises enough we've never had an argument you know never had a crossword just 100 percent trust That's for nice. all those years it's uh, i i feel like even she came into my life sort of by, you know, I don't know, the universe, whatever. Yeah. It was, I said to Depeche, I, I, I just I just finished DJing. Why did I stop DJing? I stopped DJing in the end for two reasons. Because of my ears and also because Head Candy um, cut all the DJ fees. <laughs> God, if I'm Fuckers. perfectly honest. Fuckers. They, overnight, they're just half the DJ fees. Oh, and I was wow. like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, and then um and then I was I was making all the head candy albums as well. Yeah. Uh, I did 50 albums. Um and they and then they I, I'm probably saying too much. I'm oversharing here, but they they half that fee as well. And I was like, fuck that as well. Yeah. So suddenly, suddenly I'm like, okay, I've stopped DJing, I've stopped making these albums. That was my bread and butter. I'm like, shit, what do I do? Luckily I'd had I'd had some success with example. So I, I said to Depeche at ministry, I said, I need a manager. Who do you recommend? And he said, Oh, what about Hannah Joseph? I don't know why it was just in his mind. And, um, so I approached her thinking, I honestly thought she wouldn't give me the time of day. Yeah. She, she, worked for, she worked for three, six zero at the time. Yeah. She's huge, huge company. And it's like a big thing. Um, but yeah, it was, it was the total opposite. It was like, Oh, like hundred percent interest. Oh, you're having success here. Well, let's 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 go with it. You know. Yeah. And I've learned since um, the time to get a manager is when you're blowing up, not when you're looking to blow up. Yeah. Do you know? What I mean? Don't go to a manager to to give you a career. You go to a manager when you can't handle your career. Yeah. And so, I, so I, you know, I I was having some success with example, and I've done all these mixes. I think I've done Riverside and Crookers and. Um, all those things. So yeah, there was something there yeah. that she saw and she went on and, and built it. Um, not immediately, but you know, 
takes time. Yeah, it does take time. Um, but eventually, yeah, I mean, it's just worked, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to to find someone you can trust. I guess is the main. Yeah, yeah. The main thing, isn't it? Yeah. The manager. How yeah. how do you manage your? This this might be a bit of a personal question to tell me if it is or not you don't have to talk about it i haven't been very personal so far (laughs) i don't i don't want to know numbers and stuff but how do you manage your finances when it comes to your career because we all know that sometimes it can be a busy time and sometimes it can't and i know that i know that you're always busy but i think there comes a point it's like okay you earn more money you buy a bigger house you you your expenses go up right and like you live a life that's that's yeah how do how have you managed that i i uh i'm probably not the best person to talk to (laughs) Um, (laughs) i like everybody well not everybody else but some people i you know i yeah i started earning good money and then i started buying loads of gear and yeah um and then you know, bought a flat in London, then bought a house in London, and then and then bought bought a big house in the countryside. And it's like, yeah, yeah I, I've probably stretched myself a bit too far. Yeah, over the years, you know. Um, it's a good, it's a really good question you're asking there. Mm. And the answer is, I wish someone had guided me a bit more. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. I'm here on my own in this house now, and it's like it's just ridiculous. Just I'm don't gonna, need I'm, it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna, um, <laughs> you know, when I moved in, I, it was like three kids and a and a partner. But yeah, now it just seems ridiculous. But um, yeah, there's no one really guiding you like in that no. in that department, and it's I think it's it's really important because um, because you do have peaks and troughs yeah. in, in your career for sure. Um, yeah. Maybe the answer is not to stretch yourself fully. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because I like it, it also goes back to that power of now thing. It's like, yeah. there's also that level of like you work your ass off and there comes a point when you're like, what am I doing all this for? Right. Uh, yeah, I remember that point. Yeah, like for me, that's where I'm at. It like being like completely honest. That's where I'm at in my career now. Yeah. Where it's like, what are you doing all this for? If you're just constantly just on the go and not actually. Yeah, I remember that moment though. And I, I was living in like a shared house in London, working on all these hit records, and I was just thinking, what am I doing? And then I went to see a mortgage advisor, and she was like, oh, you've got enough saved to buy a house. And I was like, oh, oh. yeah. I, I couldn't get my head around the fact that you don't buy a house. I don't know why. This is the most ridiculous thing. I, I lived in London where nothing, there was no houses below a million pounds. Yeah. And I was like, how am I ever going to afford a house? Yeah, yeah. How am I going to save a million pounds? Yeah. I didn't think, oh, you get a mortgage. That's yeah. Not all people get a mortgage, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just, my brain didn't work like that. I was like, how am I ever going to save a million pounds? I was trying to save a million pounds. This was never going to happen. Um, but yeah, so in the end, it was like, yeah, uh, she was like, "Oh, you've you've got enough for a deposit on a house. You can get a mortgage this much." And I was like, "Ah, oh, now it all makes sense." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah, that yeah. for me was all it was. It was just like almost like joining the real world. This is what real people do. Oh, they buy. All my mates have bought houses. Bought houses like yeah. now, I can do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I, I remember- totally, totally get it, man. And it's it's a weird. I I think just generally we aren't taught about finances. Not. I'm not no. talking music industry. I'm talking life. Like yeah. I listened to, I literally listened to a podcast yesterday and like, I've luckily like my parents always told me to save and everything like that. And mm. kind of, I've always been reasonably good with money, but th- this podcast, I was like, some of the things that they, they were saying, I was like, why is this not being taught? If you yeah. know what I mean, like in, uh, talking about investing, if you know what I mean. And they did this like calculate if you invested like, 500 pound a month for 40 years into a fund like you're coming out with like 2 million yeah and, and, that's your retirement. and that's your retirement and and you're just like fuck 
what why aren't all these things being taught to people and especially like for me like managers teams and everything like that why aren't they kind of teaching their artists this why aren't they talk why aren't you guys having these conversations it's like i think i think some managers and and they they feel a little bit out of place talking about it and or or you don't want to look like you're jealous or i don't know what it is but i do feel like you know people are going to do what they want to do yeah you know, oh don't don't i don't think you should buy that house mm, is anybody going to say that to you i don't know do you know what i mean it's yeah. like to be honest, buying a house is actually good i've got a good accountant and he's behind me with the, the, the house buying he said to me once and the consult, he was like, if you if you come to me and said I want to buy a Lamborghini, I'd probably I'd probably try and Sway dissuade you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like but an SSL console, yeah, go for it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He's, <laughs> he's, he's uh, just your best mate, isn't he? So that's you, uh, he's good, he's good, he's good. But um yeah, he would he I like to think my accountant would tell me if I was about to do something stupid. Yeah. Um but yeah definitely needs to be taught at schools maybe it is now i don't, I don't know. think it is no no i don't think it is what are they teaching people at school <laughs> french well yeah but if you think about it like can do you use anything from school apart from english it's a tough question isn't it because because you, you learn a lot at school you learn a lot of life at school. isn't taught exactly isn't yeah. taught in the classroom um but yeah no i know what you mean Am I using Pythagoras' theorem daily? Absolutely not. not. <laughs> He's got a phone for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Chat oh, GPT. You won't, always, you won't always have a calculator on you. That's what they used to say. <laughs> yeah, they did, didn't they? It's funny, that. Got um, it on your wrist now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, it's mad. It's mad. Do you ever do, like, in-person mixdowns where people are in the room with you? Do you like doing that? Rarely. I don't like doing it. Um, and I normally... I normally get the mix to a point before people come in and do tweaks. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I've not really, and I've not done, I've recently started doing um, masterclasses for um, A&R actually. Oh, cool. Which is quite a cool thing. What's A&R? Like, um, so record label, you know. Oh, um, for A&Rs. For A&Rs, I thought, yeah. Sorry, I thought A&R was like a, youtube channel or something like that or no, like a, no 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 record label a and r so yeah you know you I mean i know you know i thought you was asking for yeah, the listeners no, no, no. <laughs> a and r is, is someone who signs artists at a record label yeah. for people that, um so yeah i've been doing master classes for them but to benefit sort of um everyone like so they can learn the lingo because they're so they absolute know. wankers <laughs> Oh, I can't say that. You never said that, did you? Um, no, because because a lot a lot of the I'm going to be so diplomatic now, and you're going to edit that. You don't now. have to be diplomatic. I do. You don't know because they all know. Like I love. I've got friends that are A and R. They all know. They all know. It's like they all know. Yeah, like I love them. Amazing. I love them, but let's add that bit in. We love them. I do. But yeah, a lot of them don't necessarily know a lot of the lingo they're using. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, can you yeah. impress that more? Can you sidechain that more? Yeah. What can can you can you um I'm not even gonna say some of them because some, <laughs> of, them so, some of them are so ridiculous and specific to certain people that they would know if they're listening, they'd know what I'm talking about them and I can't, I just can't do it. But I've had some howlers, absolute howlers over the years. Um, and I just got, yeah, I just thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to get them in and teach them. <laughs> no, it's really, it's really interesting. And I actually yeah. like it because I think there is, there's a lack of, that, this is the thing. And I, I know you're working a lot more with majors, um, mm. but it's really interesting for like me where I, I, don't really work with majors and we're starting to work with majors like over the last year or two. Yeah. And it's really interesting, the relationship between the A&R and the artist mm -hmm. and like how that relationship is bonded. And 
there does come a point when an A and I will say something and you as the artist, it's actually like really fucking offensive to yeah. sometimes and it, or just completely laughable where you're kind of, it sounds horrible to say, but your kind of respect for them is just like goes out the window for a certain yeah. point because you're like, what's this fucking guy doing? He doesn't know, or what's this girl doing? They don't, don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. And I think there is a level of like, okay, you want to be an A&R, you have to be, you have to educate yourself to a certain level. I'm not asking you to be a producer. I'm not asking you to be an engineer. I'm asking for your ears. Like yeah. also maybe like, don't try and be technical if you don't know it and be honest. Like I'm not a technical yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what side chain compression is, but can we put some on it? Yeah. Let's <laughs> be honest. <laughs> you would hate me. I never, um, I never use compression. You never use compression? No, I know. Or just in general? Generally, yeah. I love that. I don't hate that. I love that. I never use uh, it. You know what? I, 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 I started my career for the first probably seven years without a compressor. I didn't, yeah. I didn't have one because it was pre-VST. Yeah. And do you know how I got around it? I just made everything fucking loud. Yeah. <laughs> so that, turn the gain up. Yeah. It's got no headroom. It's compressing. Yeah. <laughs> All of my records had distorted hats, distorted bass, distorted vocals. That's a vibe. Yeah, yeah, it was a vibe. It was wicked. There's a. Why don't you... They're definitely attainable now. I just don't. I don't fully understand them. Interesting. And I did it all at university. Yeah, so like I learned, I learned how to break the rules. Yeah, like I understand what they do totally yeah. but for me is like if i can make it sound great without using anything uh -huh. like does it need anything technically probably yes uh, well no no if it sounds great without it why why does it need it because it probably would sound even better if we used it or greater yeah but like yeah. that's always been a thing for me is like if i i use eq a lot but yeah, as well, like, I, I'm not afraid of EQ. No. You know, I don't do that subtractive bollocks. I just no. EQ the ass out of it. Yeah. If, so it, it, if it sounds good, it sounds good. Yeah. Simple. But same with compression. I don't really, when I whack a compressor on it, I don't necessarily have it compressing. That sounds weird. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but it does something. Yeah. That's the thing for me is like, I'm like, can I tell the difference? If I can tell the difference and it makes it better, then yes, yeah. I use I it. I mean, for me, like these outboard, these I, I use these Wes Audio mm. uh, Eight Seventy Sixes. They're called yeah. on vocals. You chuck that on a vocal, and it just sounds like a finished vocal. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It, for me, it's like it's just easy. You put that on it, put a bit of reverb on, bit of EQ, dash your yeah. finished vocal. Yeah, it sounds great, amazing. Do you know what I mean? So. When I, yeah, way. when I've used it separate studios, like in London or something, and they have like a vocal chain, you're like, okay, this sounds way better than yeah. what I would be able to record in my studio. Yeah. 100%. And I, have, I have a vocal chain as well. Yeah. It goes, it goes through various things really subtly. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I think I've got it going through the Manly, Very Mew, um, the, the Beat of 76 is the uh, SSL Fusion. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think that's the thing for me that I would be way better at is if it was like just outboard and it was just more hands-on and being like, yeah. okay, I twist this knob and like, I can hear a difference and I can um, make, I, I don't, I don't think I'd be any good in the box now either. Mm. I, I, I literally, I tried it recently just for speed. Someone's like, oh, can you just do a vocal mix on this? And I thought I'll try it. I'll just do it in the box. And I just felt really lost. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, ah. Uh... I couldn't tell if it sounded right or not. So I, and then I loaded it on the console. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, that, um, I think that would be the thing for me is to like get more into it. It's just like get more outboard stuff. But then when you're yeah. on the road all the time, you, you just need more, You need some more synths. Ah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just a MIDI thing, though, because I've just worked on a project and I had like a keys player come in and i've never i'm i can play the keys kind of but i'm not like full-on keys player 
right. and they wanted so like, got weighted, really? they want no it's not even weighted he just wanted like actual full length keyboard because right. it's like then you don't have to press the octave up all the time yeah 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 of course um but yeah i just always use this the sub i used to have, i had a wall of synths as well i got addicted to buying synths Did you? in the in the round yeah 2008 round there i just had a wall of them and 808 nine and nine you've yeah. got an 808 uh, I've got the like the clone. Um, yeah. This drum machine that you can't really see. This is the best though. It's the ADS Seven AVP. Ooh. It's German. They they make like fifty of them, and then just like how make them, and then they like put an email out going, "We've just made a, a bunch. Who wants one?" Jeez. And they're they're amazing. Sounds so really? good. Yeah, sounds so German. No, so Russian. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, I. To be fair though, the sub thirty seven is amazing, like the Moog sub thirty seven. Yeah, Moog's Moog's it's always just. Best. I used to use. A, I had just had a meter. What the? Little fatty is it? Sub sub fatty or the little fatty? Little fatty, I think. Yeah. I used to use that for bass on everything. Like around the when I did hot right now, we did the bass with that um, DJ Fresh um, and and. An 808 for the snare on that. I didn't as well. know you Real did that one. Yeah, yeah. Did 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 mix it and I did some production on it as well. Like the snare, you know, there's an 808 snare and kick on there. Off, uh, no, is it 909? Can't remember what we use now. Maybe 909, or maybe the kick off one, the snare yeah. off the other. I can't remember. Um, and and the and the the bass is off the the little fatty. Um, it's just solid. Just yeah. sounds solid. Anything analog. To me, it just sounds solid, especially on a low octaves. When you go down, boom, yeah. boom, 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 it just keeps the solidity. No, if you do that on a, if you do that on a BST synth, don't get it. Oh, it just disappears as you go down. Yeah, doesn't it? yeah, yeah. It's a fake sub. And are you, um, are you the same about ex- external gear yeah. like compression, EQ, yeah. reverb? Yeah, I don't use plugins. Yeah, I've worked with Steve Dubs a few times. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you you your mates with him or anything, but I feel um, like my manager used to manage him. He dub. Yeah, does all the cabin stuff and Moby stuff. But like uh, uh, my manager used to manage him yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, and he was the first person that I've like w- sat in a room with that used SSL desks. Yeah. And it was just like absolute game changer. To yeah. be fair, it does make yeah. me want to buy one, but go and buy one. <laughs> Your accountant will, uh, <laughs> will <a> hate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably a depreciating asset, to be fair. I don't know um, if it is, though, is it? Because, like... It is. That's is not, it? That's not high. Yeah. 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 It ain't going up in value. True, I guess. <laughs> but it, it does make money. Yeah. So, um, But it's, it's fun, and it sounds good. I think the fun bit is the most important part, right? Yeah. It's... Just sitting in front of this every day, it's just fun. That's mate. That's amazing. That's that makes me happy to hear that because, yeah. like, I think it's very easy when you've been doing it for so long to get jaded, and to like, yeah. and just yeah. to be like, oh, here's another fucking mix. I I get it sometimes, where I'm just yeah. like, oh fucking hell, I've got to write another record, or I've got to do this, yeah. or I've got to do that, and for me, it's like, how do I find that fun in it again? And from, mm. from now I've worked it out that it's like working with other people because I've never worked yeah. with people. I've always just been Lone Ranger in my studio by myself right. and working with people, like getting in a room with people and just like having a laugh. That's way more fun to me. Yeah, 100%. I remember that. I remember that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. <Having a> laugh. <laughs> Mate, we've just done an hour and a half. Um, yeah. I absolutely love this conversation. Thank you so yeah. much for coming Great. on, man. Um how can people do you do you do use social media at all? You, I'm you, on Instagram, yeah, yeah. Um just Wes Clark uh on Instagram, yeah. I'm not on Twitter or anything, but um yeah. Probably probably good I'm thing. around. Probably a good thing not being on Twitter. No, I'm not, I mean I am on Twitter, but um I'm not on Twitter. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not on Facebook or any or any of those. Nice man. Those Dude, yeah. thanks for uh thanks for coming on. Thank you, man. And keep it's in touch. Great. Yeah, you too. And I'll see you soon. Big love. Peace. And that's a wrap. Big love to Wes. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for listening. If you did like it, please subscribe. Please 
give us a review um and also if you want to get involved in the community hit the link in the description keep safe see you next time